Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cats 101, still rolling in the triple digits. I'm Sorg right here in the studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, in studio, over on the couch, as usual, is there's Chachi. Insert coin to begin.com. Hi guys. How you doing? I am well. Excellent. How are you, good, Sorg? Good, sir. Good, sir. Good. Like we like we haven't talked for two hours before the I show know. kicks off. It's like we just like, oh, there you are. That's why my in, my my whole little introduction spiel is kind of not good oh, at well, this they, point. You know, you know. Because <laughs> we've already been talking for two hours, so you saying asking me how I'm doing would be basically me recapping the conversation from the past two hours. That's fine. With less swear words, yes, because I can't use them on the show. Definitely, yeah. but. In computer land, <laughs> let me kick it over to uh, Mr. Rob De La Creta. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> the understated Rob De La Creta. How are you, Rob? Uh, I'm right, a little tired. There's somebody outside my uh, my house right now making some noises, and I don't know what's happening. So something <laughs> weird. Are they are they messing with your internet? Are they making you go all pixely? Maybe they are. Uh, or actually, uh, I think my I think my 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 housemate is currently watching Star Wars, and she might be streaming it. Ah, uh, so. there you go. That's probably what's yeah. going on. I also join us returning to the show is John Carmen, communication designer with Avenue Design Studios dot com at Carmen Avenue on the Twitters. If you want to follow him, how you doing, John? No, well, I'm still here, and uh, I'm having less problems than Rob tonight. That's good. That's good. <laughs> This sounds like such an awesome job, communication designer. I made that up. Actually, yeah, no, that's, that was that's my major definitely an college. awesome made-up title. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, John? That was my major in college. Really? Yeah. Communication yeah, so design? so I decided to use it in real life. Huh. Nice, nice. It just sounds fun. Excellent. And, of course, you've come across the awesome cast where we uh, get the geek out from a perspective from one of the flyover states here in Pittsburgh. Um... You can find more about us over at awesomecast.com. We're here live every Tuesday night at live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room, streaming live on Justin TV. Yes. Um, and you can also <laughs> drop into the Hangout. We got rocking behind us. And if there's anybody in the Hangout towards the end of the show, we'll open that up and see if uh, there's anything we missed or they got any opinions on what we talked about. So drop in there. Get circled. Circle us on, uh, on Google+. Plus. So we'll circle you back, and you'll get an invite for that on Tuesday nights when we go live. Uh, also, hey, drop us a line at contact at awesomecast.com. Twitter us at awesomecast. Join us on Google+, Plus and Facebook. Uh, if you're going to be talking about this episode, be sure to tag your comments. Uh, hashtag AC101 and uh, so we can follow along and see what's going out, on out there um, so let's get right into it guys what's your first story here um, that's not exciting according um, to the, the Google Doc or what's the first story you want to what's cover? the first one you want to talk about Chachi I don't care <laughs> Okay. so uh, this guy uh, uh, this tattoo artist implanted magnets into his wrist Yes. So he can wear his iPod Nano as a watch. Are you going to show the video? I'm, I'm trying to, but there's an ad apparently. Oh. I didn't see the ad before. Uh, what he did was he cut himself. <laughs> well, I mean, no, I mean, he cut himself. Like piercing wise. Yeah, and he put in uh, four magnets. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that, that's the video right there. Sped up. And he made sure everything lines up and when he puts the iPod close to his skin it sticks because well that's what it does with magnets and there metal it is. <laughs> so this is an interesting uh, body modification there's the magnets right there it looks like they're just just four single magnets implanted in there um, so so well yeah, he's obviously somebody that's done a lot of body mod on himself already he's, he's tattooed pretty much from head to toe it looks like um, but, uh, so what, what do you guys think of this? You think this is the next step in modification? <laughs> remember, remember when all, all the goth kids got like hooks in their back and stuff? This is the next step. They still do that. And, and of course they still do that. I mean, it, it's not that surprising. Yeah. yeah it's not, I mean, it's just, like, go ahead. Go Rob. It's, uh, it's not surprising and it's not really new. I mean, there's a, a painful, uh, but I'm um, painful number of, uh, body mods that are, like this sort of weird thing. And, you know, if it's your bag, go for it. But there's plenty of, there's like, you know, historically, there's been plenty of people who've done weird things to their body to, uh, to like sort of, uh, mesh themselves with the board, if you will. Um, cause like you could also, 
Was that a save? Um, what that? Save that. Save, save that. the board comment and bring it back. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna save yes. the board comment. Yes, I'm put that on a note card. Um, but like, so there's a, a security system thing that uh, I've seen somewhere. I forget what it was. But basically, a, uh, a motorcycle or scooter will not turn on unless activ- activated by the certain like magnet ring. And it's not uncommon for people to have this sort of thing implanted in their bodies. So, like, it's a security system where, like, only you can do this thing because it's implanted in your body. This happens to be just, like, a really dumb example because, I mean, it's a magnet to hold a, really? Like, that's the coolest thing you could come up with? You can spend money on that? I mean, you know what? Honestly, I think if I were going to do something like that, if anything, I would probably figure out a way to uh, get, like, a small flash drive implanted somewhere. Yeah, but then, then like, eventually that, like, 16 gigs is going to be right. nothing, and you're going to have to upgrade it. Yeah. I mean, think about your upgrade path yeah. of your body, sir. <laughs> you know, I mean, what, what, like, okay, like, every five years, like, I got I to upgrade to, to, like, you know, put a, put a solid state drive would, in there. Or... Well, I mean, just like anything, it, it's going to get outdated, but, I mean, if I were going to do a technology-based implant, I think that would be more the way to go. At least it has use. Yeah, like, re- I mean, like even with the use. magnet thing, even with the magnet thing, hypothetically, the next version of the Nano has less ferrous metals in it, so it's not that magnetic. thing doesn't work anymore. Now what, genius? Yeah, now you just have magnets in your wrist. Yeah, now you, you're <laughs> just that guy who, like, attracts paper clips in office. <laughs> <laughs> May what... Well, and metal detectors, because I don't think these magnets come out. Well, like, well I, you don't have to worry about. I mean, it's stuff not like, like a, a general piercing that you, usually you can take out. Well, I mean, obviously you can see that the dude has metal implanted in his wrist. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it's not. Uh, they don't really yeah, uh, make detectors. you take out piercings anymore. No, because mm-hmm. I mean, people have piercings in places that they can't really just take out. <laughs> When they get to yeah, the and a lot detector. of a lot of body jewelry these days is made out of like uh, med grade titanium stuff like that that they don't really they'll it'll never set up a metal detector and they don't really care. Uh, what do you think about this, John? Too far for your? I would have gone with Velcro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't they do a Kickstarter to raise so much money to make an adapter to turn your iPod Nano into? There a are watch? literally hundreds of adapters. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. That's like. Then yeah, why yeah. why do you need magnets, sir? <laughs> yeah. Get a get a wrist strap. Yeah. Don't shake your head at me. What was the thing you were saying before this that he should partner up with those like live life people? Yeah, I, 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 before the show because I, oh, I just strong people. I just now no not live strong, but I uh, yeah. I just <laughs> I, I honestly I just read the the story for the first time right before. Yeah, we, well, yeah, I just picked <laughs> up on this while I was like I was you know, right before we went right, live before I came on here I, um, I found this, but I. Uh, I said that he should have got together with a holistics medicine person yeah. because I'm sure there's some kind of placement pattern that he could have done with the magnets in his wrist to actually increase his livelihood somehow. Okay, okay. Or maybe just having those there <laughs> in his wrist that helps the blood flow or something. Yeah, I mean, there is there's, there's certainly... There is actual science behind like uh, magnets being used to manipulate the way the body functions, mm. but I don't think that's what this guy had. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, don't I mean, worries about <laughs> this, so not at all. I was just saying he could have done that, and then it would have had a real purpose. There you go. You guys, what if he listens to the show? That's fine. That's not full, but <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. We're just kind of looking. I I think it's interesting, um, and the. Yeah, and he did it to himself. Well, I say, screw that guy. I hope he never listens. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Thanks for keeping it real. Um, so, uh, mentioning the Borg a little bit, we'll go into this one that. Uh, uh, yeah, Rob, didn't you have a Borg segue? Oh, oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and make it smooth. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mentioned that. Uh, 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 integrating technology with your body, sort of like, you know, assimilating with, with the Borg, if you will. And that brings us to uh, this story that John passed along. What are you doing back there? <laughs> Whatever! I don't, I don't know what, what I'm thinking. Don't worry for. about it. You don't know where this is going. Uh, Thank you. 
This story came from DJ Lunchbox, actually. Yes, it did. Yeah, Will Will Rutherford of the Monster IQ that's been on the show in the past. Uh, so, so uh, you pass this along, John. What, what what's going on here? Uh, so this guy uh, came up with the specs to build a real Starship Enterprise okay. in the next twenty years. The over next the next twenty, 20 years. years, using mostly existing technology. So it's going to be a functioning Enterprise. Uh, according to his plans, no one's actually building this thing. Okay. But if you go to buildtheenterprise.org, which looks like it's it's loading a little faster today, it's had some problems. Uh, it has all of the specs, the plans. Uh, Generation 1, which in, according to his plans can be built in 20 years, would take 90 days to reach Mars. Okay, wow. Yeah, but okay. he, he, has, um, he has a long-term plan, too, for several generations of, of Enterprise ships. Here's my problem. Okay. <laughs> Wait, you're not a Trekkie, first off. Well, I, I for, okay, I'm not, I, no, I'm not a Trekkie. You're, you're a Star Wars. However, um, it's just because I don't want to sit down and watch all of the shows, all the episodes. I just don't want to do that. They're all okay. on Netflix. I know. They are. <laughs> but, uh, awesome. I, and I'll get there eventually. It's just there's other stuff I'm going to watch before I get there. I mean, I'm only halfway through Power Rangers. Wow. <laughs> I see. Right. This is where you your priorities are. So, anyhow, uh, my problem with this story is that in the first paragraph, <laughs> it says that he needs uh, a few spare nuclear reactors <laughs> to, no, spare. To, to build this. Yes. So. I, I hear Japan has one you can borrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean. Uh, no, not too soon. It was hilarious. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I mean, who has who has a nuclear reactor just laying around for this guy to borrow? There, 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 are plenty of former Soviet Union. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure North Korea has some laying around. I, yeah, yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm, I'm sure they'll sell it to you at wholesale. Oh man. So, yeah. I don't, no, this is just. First of all, you know that development won't begin until 2014. So yeah. you're, you're anticipating that more nuclear reactors will be available for his Just use? Some talk needs to happen before then to find out where we get the nuclear reactors. There's sure. plenty of time to work this out. Like, I mean, this is on the table. I mean, just like going to Mars, what was it? They're, they're the moon base on Mars. I mean, there's plenty of time to get this on the table. It's all the getting moon privatized. Base on Mars? I'm sure like the Google guy or the Virgin Mobile guy will get, or Virgin Air guy or where the hell he was will get on it. You know, he'd be like, this is a great idea. Here's all my money. I swear to God, if Ashton Kutcher is the first person to step foot on the new Enterprise, I, I will do some really bad things. I actually think this guy might be a virgin guy. Really? Yeah. Judging yeah. by how much time he's put into building the Enterprise. Uh, this is at WarrenEllis.com. I'm not familiar with Warren Ellis. Warren Ellis or Ellis? Ellis. E-L-L-I-S. Does that matter, Rob? Do you know an Alice? <laughs> Uh, well, Warren Ellis has a Wikipedia page. Oh. Uh, he is an English author of comics, novels, and television who is well known for sociocultural commentary, both through his online presence and through his writing, which covers transhumanist themes, mm-hmm. most notably nanotechnology, cryo- cryonics, mind transfer, and human enhancement. And he is a resident of Southern on Sea, England. Warren Ellis wrote a post about the Build the Enterprise guy. He's not the Enterprise guy. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Damn. All right. Who's the Enterprise guy? Uh, the Enterprise guy is known as BTE, which I believe stands for Build the Enterprise Dam. Oh. Yeah. Yep, because that's a guy I want to give a nuclear reactor to. Hey. BTE Dan. BTE Here's Dan at buildtheenterprise.org. Listen, what more Doc, do you need to know? If Doc Brown could get <laughs> his hands on... Give this guy a reactor. <laughs> if Doc Brown could get his hands on some uh, plutonium, why not, right? He hey. had to steal it from the Libyans. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they yeah. killed him. Oh, wait, I actually clicked through <laughs> to the site, and yeah, it is having a little bit of trouble loading. That yeah, it, it looks like it's not loading anytime soon. Wow. Really? What are the I got, Libyans up to now? I got to it perfect on the iPad. Well, because it's not loading all the flash. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, ninety days to Mars—that's that'd be that'd be pretty tremendous. A lot better than what we're doing now. What, what's our what's our current? Isn't that a band? No, it's thirty seconds. 
30 seconds, oh, not 90. Yeah. 30 <laughs> seconds? That's ridiculous. That's just completely unrealistic for a band and a, and a name. Come on. Come on. So, um, so in the other uh, realm of crazy things people are building, this is actually probably a little more on the achievable side. Uh, apparently, scientists in New Mexico... Uh, according to this article on Fox News, I found this via Google Plus. Look, it's useful. Um, they plan to they plan a one billion dollar ghost town. Basically, it's going to have the in- infrastructure of, of a small city for them to test uh, stuff like traffic patterns, uh, oh, test everything nice. from intelligent yeah. traffic systems to next generation wireless networks to automated washing machines and self flushing toilets. Because we need a whole ghost town to test new toilets. Uh, uh. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Apparently, this is a plan uh, for uh, rejuvenating this section of New Mexico uh, that uh, was devastated by the. Uh, uh, ah, crap. One of the industries left. Oh, the oil bust of the 1980s. Uh, I guess they is were so... This, is this the same town that has the lead line refrigerators for Indiana Jones to hide in? I'm... That's, that sounds about right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and I guess they're on track for this. They, they, they need a billion dollars to do it. Um... How many nuclear reactors does this company need? <laughs> I don't know. This might be That's a good, probably you why know they what? have so many lead line fridges. <laughs> we need to connect these guys with the Starship guy, and I think may, th- that that could happen because uh, it'll happen now. It, it, this will be the San Francisco of the future of the Star Trek movie, and um, they just got the wrong spot. Remember, they were building that Enterprise in the middle of the desert. Well, this Enterprise will be built in space, by the way. Oh. Well, that makes more sense. Wait, so we, do we have the technology to do that much? Yeah. I mean, wait, I guess we, we're doing space stations, but... We may not have the money. Okay. Yeah, we, we have the technology to do it, we just don't have the money. Okay. And by we, I mean NASA, the so we, by we, NASA, I should mean privatized royal, industry. Privatized, so, in fact, okay, the answer okay. is yes. Yes, yeah, so somebody yeah. has the money to do it. The yeah. money is around somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of tossing around. So, uh, so Ghost Town. I would love to visit the ghost town. I'm all for it. I mean, technically, (laughs) they sort of built ghost towns when they tested nuclear bombs. Yeah, yeah, but that that was kind of a one-off thing, wasn't it? (laughs) Well, (laughs) you know what? (laughs) You know what? I I want to be one of the first people to visit the ghost town. Okay. You You can't visit the ghost town. It defeats the purpose of it being a ghost town. I know know this, but you want to know why? I want to be the first asshole to tag a building in the ghost town. A billion dollar built a building a billion dollar city, and I want to be the asshole. Yeah, what this needs is one of those entree the giant faces. Yes. Well, so, I mean, building. realistically, if they're gonna simulate a real town, it's I, gonna I, have graffiti and I trash. And mm-hmm. well, <laughs> I just want to check in on Foursquare. <laughs> become become mayor of a ghost town. Yeah, yeah. There's an accomplishment. Put a geocache somewhere. There you go. There you go. Maybe that, 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 it's the quiet. It's, it's the it's the unspeak of spoken of uh, playground for these scientists, basically. So, <laughs> all right, let's get into something else here. Uh, let's delve a little bit into the video game side. There's a few stories here, uh, including one by InsertCoinToBegin.com. Who wrote this? Is this one of yours? I yeah, did it. One of you. I did it. All right. It so what's me. going on? There's a little bit of an intellectual property issue going on with Assassin's Creed, oh, so... which is, by the way, I think is the most. Uh, 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 patriotic video game uh, I've seen today from the trailers. Well, so far, for the new one. I mean, the new one, yeah. Um, so I, this author, uh, John Beswinger, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's suing them for five point two five million dollars, and he wants them to cancel the release of their upcoming game, Assassin's Creed Three. Which Ubisoft. Is Sor- He's talking about Ubisoft. Yeah, Ubisoft. Yeah. Um, which, as Sorg stated, takes place during the American Revolution, and it's supposed to be uh, this inv- this advancement, huge advancement in gameplay, because the open world is supposed to be the biggest ever done in a video game setting. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's suing them because he's saying that they stole his idea, which... Technically, he stole also, so 
Now, uh, any idea for those that don't play Assassin's uh, Creed? Is, in is, Assassin's Creed, uh, you play... Technically, you're playing a character who is laying in a bed for the entire game. Mm -hmm. uh, what it is, is it's a technology company who has created a machine to allow living people to relive the memories of their ancestors. Uh, in the game and in the book, both characters are reliving the memories of their ancestors because their ancestors are connected to this plot to regain religious uh, artifacts that, when combined, give the, the beholder uh, untold power and the ability to rule the world. And then it gets really mystical from there. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, and, and basically, all these companies are trying to steal this technology from each other because they all want uh, access to it. And in Assassin's Creed, the two sides are the Templars and the Assassins, and in the book, it's just a bunch of different uh, scientific companies that want the, the ability to relive memories. Um, so this this fine, fine, upstanding citizen of a gentleman is suing Ubisoft for, like I said, $5.25 million and wants them to stop the release of the game because he's saying that now is the time for him to point out the fact that his stolen idea was also stolen. After four major releases. Yeah. Yeah. Was also stolen. Yeah, well, you know. Um, but he he got the story from Alan Hathaway in 1981, um, a short story called "They Died Twice." So, uh, who knows who, how well this is going to hold up? Yeah, and it's not like um, and, and and apparently I I don't know who's read it to see how close it is. Uh, it sounds like it's the overall concept and not necessarily the Assassin's Creed gameplay concept or anything like that which which funny because i i think you saw this too um i i didn't know assassin's creed started off as being another uh, prince of persia right. project which well, is an interesting way to go with that a lot of games start off that way yeah they yeah. start off as one thing and they end up as another i mean super mario brothers 2 is a great example of that mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. wasn't supposed to be super mario brothers 2 but they used the sprites and they were like bam mario that Wait, was what was it supposed to be uh it was uh doku doku panic <laughs> he was a guy in a turban that kind of looked like Mario. Yeah. So, um, and uh, Devil May Cry started off as Resident Evil Four on a boat. Right. Yep. So I mean, yeah, th this guy, after the flop of his own book, and you can't really tell uh, by the ratings on Amazon how good the book is because at this point he's <laughs> upset so many video game players he's that getting, he's, he's getting, getting bombarded with crap ratings. But yeah. the book is sold out, so who knows? Well, it, it said it sounded like it was kind of like a self-published kind of thing. Yeah, uh, from what I can tell, it, it was a self-published dealie. Yeah, and uh, didn't sell very well. You never know. I, the, the, I don't think there's any danger. As I was explaining the other night, I, I don't think there's any danger of Assassin's Creed Three being delayed over something like this. Ubisoft's going to throw money at this guy, and that's going to be it. I mean, in the long run. So we always hear about these. Like, there's those stories going around that, like, the Xbox 360 might not be shipped to America because of some lawsuit overseas or something, or here. Or I don't, I don't remember what. But you, you're, you never see any of that stuff actually come to fruition, except for I think China and the Samsung iPad thing. But that's about it. Or was it Australia or something? But it doesn't you know. matter. Um, China, Australia. So, well, yeah, so yeah, they're, they're both over there, you know. Guy's idea was stolen. Stolen. And now he wants money. Of course, no bias because you really want to play this game when it comes out. None at all. Yeah. None at all. Yeah, as Sonic says that Ubisoft can definitely outspend this guy. Especially if he's already sold out on... Well, Amazon. considering that they have to, because they've already... They've probably already spent $5 million in development. Yeah, it's a bigger investment. And they're yeah. going to make it whatever they gave this guy and whatever they developed... Right. It's one of those things where they've already spent more money developing not only the, the new game engine that it requires to run, mm -hmm. but the game itself than what this guy is asking. And they're going to make it back a hundred times over. I mean, it's going to be huge. All right. I got a fury, a flurry. Your face. Of, what, what, what? Your face. Oh, I got a flurry of uh, some Xbox news here. Yes, I do. 
Yes, I do. Uh, first of all, uh, this was interesting. Al Franken always seems to be involved in these technology stories, uh, stories here. Uh, Compass Xfinity on demand uh, may violate net neutrality agreement. Now, Chachi, you've been playing with this, haven't you? What? Uh, Xfinity on your Xbox? Sure have. Now it's basically your cable box, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't... Well, I mean, the only room I have a real cable box in is my living room. Yeah. And that happens to be the room I spend the least amount of time in. Mm. So, I mean, it's there spe uh, specifically for the roommates. And that's it. Like, I don't use the DVR. It's all on my Xbox now. So. Well, there's been uh, there's been word about, of course, and I don't know if we mentioned it here on the show, uh, that if you use Xfinity, the internet that you're using for your Xfinity app on your Xbox uh, is not actually using your internet bandwidth, or that is capped. It doesn't count towards your capped allotment, basically, um, which could definitely violate net neutrality and give a little bit of a uh, helping hand to to them. Because, I mean, they're they're giving uh, preference to to uh, traffic on the Internet. Uh, what do you so? Th so? So? Um, this is kind of the slippery slope that they worry about net neutrality. And correct me if I'm wrong here with this, as I try to understand net neutrality here, Rob. Um, because basically, if they start giving their their stuff preferential treatment, what's to say that they give a <laughs> de deferring treatment to something like Netflix streaming or something? Well, all right, here's... Here's how I see it. All right. Because I pay Comcast already for both services, mm -hmm. I'm saving them money by not using their technology, i.e. a cable box, to get their service. Okay. So I think it's fair that they're giving me a pass on u internet usage when I use the Xfinity app. Okay. What do you think about this, Rob? Uh. Because, I mean... The money, I'm. I mean, the money they save can be used to. I don't know, do other things. With. I don't think it's the savings things because they still have servers mm -hmm. and everything to deal with. So yeah, I mean, everything still runs. They don't pay that much attention to. Like this isn't really piece. a bandwidth thing for them. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's one less piece of equipment that I have. To, they have to uh, provide to a customer. But that's one yeah, more connection they really, they have to provide. Yeah, they don't really care, and they they aren't actually providing it. It's it's all third party stuff that, that all the stuff gets taken care of too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fine, maybe uh, I just don't care. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Hey, Thanks, Josh. my internet's connected to my Xbox. As long as it works, I'm happy. But would you have a problem if they started saying they started degrading Netflix performance because they say, "Well, you got Xfinity. If you got a problem with your Netflix." No. Yeah, I mean that's where things get messy. Is where they say they don't do that though. So they don't do it yet, but they're they're they doing stuff yeah. like opening this stuff up. They, when they we come already to have that it. crossroad, already... then I'll get angry. But when until they, then, you I'm come not going to that crossroad. What's your alternative? Do you have FiOS in your neighborhood? Right. T-Mobile. Yeah, T-Mobile. <laughs> okay. All right, that's going to work out well. well with that slow. cap that you hit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think um, Franken's point in all of this. Uh, is largely based on the idea of like what they're doing right now is not necessarily that bad, but it's an example of setting a precedent of allowing them to do it. Exactly. exactly. And even though right now it doesn't negatively affect pretty much anybody, it sets the precedent that they can make this manipulation of service based on usage. Yeah. And the manipulation of service based on usage is what will, in the end, violate net neutrality and make all of us very angry. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I, I mean, and, and that's another thing. Aren't you? I don't know. You've never hit your 250 gigabyte cap, probably, right? Nope. Yeah, because nope. Well, what, what, what's that? What was that, Rob? No, oh. that was a no. Is all that was. But as you go, as you watch more Netflix and they do more HD stuff on there and all these services, somebody's going to hit that eventually. And when they do, and, and what's going to happen at that point? But if they're given a preferential treatment and not counting against that for your Xfinity, they're there's there's definitely an issue there. So, um, also on the Xbox side, uh, they are uh, apparently, according to The Verge and this article on Peaky Geek, uh, going to receive Internet Explorer Nine. Yeah, Internet TV. Explorer Nine. Yeah, doesn't the doesn't the PlayStation Three already have a browser of some yeah. sort? I don't so know what it, it is. Oh, it's really terrible. Is it? 
Well, it's, it's, it's barely functional. It's nothing standard, right? Like it's not like no, a it's Firefox. It's own browser. It's like the Sony Explorer or something like that. It's like severely when, limited. It's like when Sega had the one for for the Saturn. I was just like, well, you're on the internet. Good luck. Um, yeah, you're technically on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, just another shining example of Sony being Sony. Oh yeah, Ooh. exactly. Yeah, but Microsoft took this long to get to this point. But I wonder what you're going to be able to do on this. Like, I wonder. You know what I haven't said hmm. while using my Xbox? Man, I need a web browser. Right. That thought has never crossed my mind. The closest I've gone is, man, I wish Amazon video service was on here. That's like the only thing I think is missing. Why would you wish for that? Because I have Prime and I'd like to use it. I think it's on PS3. I think it's on PS3. It's on the Roku box, but I can't get a Roku box to work in my house for some reason. It doesn't like my routers. Um, Verizon's blocking it. I, I'm guessing Verizon's blocking it. Net neutrality, man. I'm telling you. See, that's when you need to get upset. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think it's I, the, the 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 routers they use for Verizon are complete crap. I've already had it replaced like twice, I think. So, um, and I hear a lot of complaints about stuff online. With a bunch of different services, but um, but hey, you know it's something um, because you know we use the one on the Wii so much, right? Um, and that was, that one's an actual Opera browser, um, but I don't know. The, I'd only be interested if this gave me access to something like you know, like other video sites that they don't currently have app, apps for, or something like that. I can't, I, I can't. Although Connect would be interesting with it, right, Chach? Right. What would you say? Uh, I say Connect. <laughs> Connect will be interesting to surf the internet. You know what? Minority Report no. style? Sure it will, right? It wouldn't Minority. work. It wouldn't work? No, because as it is now, I can't... I mean, I can I can use the Connect to select an app mm -hmm. or to browse menus. I can't use the Connect to scroll through movies on Netflix. But I being, can't. But being, I can't use the Connect mm -hmm. to open up my Xfinity, my Xfinity app mm -hmm. and browse through shows on it. Now, but considering this is a Microsoft application with the Internet Explorer, they're probably going to build it in, right? Yeah, right. I mean, if, it, if it's built in, all of these things are possible. Like the the newest the newest models of Samsung TVs have um, essentially Connect esque gestures built into them, where like you put your hand in front of the TV and you can like swipe between channels and things like that. Yeah, See, and like navigate the interface by like pointing around with your hand, and they'll figure it all out. And I would love that because mm -hmm. then I could just lay in bed and flick my hand. Bring it on, Microsoft! Yep. Bring it on! I'm going to surf my I'm going to surf my internets and my stuff in bed. Right. Just uh, that's it. Well, see, the only thing about that is the Connect scares me, so I'd have to turn it when I went to sleep. <laughs> your portal issue, yeah. yeah. It still scares me. I'm sorry. All right. What do you think of this, John? What? I think this could lead to online porn. You think? Lead yeah. to online porn? I think that's a danger. You think there's a gateway? I think having Chachi in bed waving his hands around could lead to something. <laughs> that's a concern. It's definitely a concern. But he does... If I'm waving my hands around, how can I be doing anything else? So You what? can be doing something, Chachi. <laughs> what You're creative. What happens in Chachi's bedroom stays in Chachi's bedroom unless he left the camera on on his Kinect. <laughs> Isn't that creepy? Because yeah, you have a camera on you all the time. Not really. No, nope. it's just when the servos move. It, no, it's just <laughs> when I'm sitting in front of the TV. Okay. Well, I mean, I have I have my room set up so that uh, if I'm using the Connect, I'm in a different part. Okay. But if I'm just sitting down and playing video games, I'm not actively right in front of the Connect. Therefore, it won't see me. Uh, Sonic says you can watch TV, uh, watch TV with your uh, with a wee bowling chair technique. I could. There you go. <laughs> all right, one more Xbox one here. Uh, this was an interesting one. Out of all things, D. Um, no, this one's obvious. It's obvious. You think uh, yes. the Xbox is the most popular video player in the U.S.? Look, we got a chart and everything, or a pie chart. Look at that pie chart. Uh, Xbox with twenty eight point two percent, followed up by the I iPad iPhone, then Android, and there's actually iPod, iPod Touches in there as well. Um, 
other 0.0 percent <laughs> exactly wait so so this is including and this is a uh, total views by non-pc or mac devices so i mean that's the roku isn't even as much as i hear about it it's not even a blip on that thing um so i that's because the general public isn't smart enough to set up a roku box that's true but everybody already had the xbox so when xbox gives an update and says hey now you can do hulu hey you can do this hey you you got youtube now i think youtube on on the xbox is the thing that's going to open it up to living room watching right above Mm -hmm. anything else that they've tried because most of the people you hear have it on their tvs don't even want to use that kind of stuff yeah, I mean, people I, like you, you underestimate how willing people are to dig into tech. So, like, we're nerds. So, if we get a TV and it says on the box, you know, you can watch Hulu or whatever on it, we're like, oh, well, I'm curious to see how this works. Most people are not that sort of curious. Most people are the same people that I'm going to use this metaphor every single show. The okay. same people who got angry when they had to upgrade from Windows 2000 or Windows 98 to Windows XP. Because things were different, things are weird, and people don't like to poke around, figure things out. They like what they know. So when you when you throw the stuff into the Xbox, it's the exact same interface using the exact same controls. You just have one more option. Exactly, and I actually had to think. Well, my mom was. I actually had her talking to. Like, you should get a Roku box. You should do this. You can start cutting down your cable because everything will be on there. I'll be great. And uh, then she went and got like a Sony Media Player. What I, I know, right? As basically, I guess what a Roku box, but it's like Sony's brand of it. And she's like, "There's some reason it had it had the connection or something, uh, or it was cheaper or or something like that." Uh, but she also got the Roku box. But I still can't puzzle that. The PS3 together. does all that. Plus, it plays Blu-ray and video games. You know how much I don't care about Blu-rays right now. <laughs> I, I, the, the, how that, much do you not care I about do Blu-rays not care right one bit about Blu-rays I'm still buying stuff on DVD trying to complete my collection well it um, also plays DVD oh yeah, yeah that's that's true that's true uh, I, Xbox plays DVD Xbox plays DVD that's what I watch all my DVDs on um no I, I just I just I'm done collecting discs past DVDs it's good I know it's going to be digital and I just like having my boxes on the shelf for now and uh and, and, and how much room you'd have if you just got rid of those boxes on the shelf? It'd be a lot of room, yeah. actually. <laughs> I've been like, Ask Rob. He doesn't collect physical media Rob, anymore. Rob doesn't like physical things. I don't have any physical media at all. It freaked me out. I had to figure out um, if the CD player in my car works or not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, I bought a car like a year ago. I just started driving it like two weeks ago. and um, Just to test the CD player? Yeah, just to test the CD play. No, everything else in the car is broken, so I was really looking for redeeming <laughs> features. And it has a six-disc six CD changer, but like no auxiliary input. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll burn some CDs, which just felt like, so just strange. Just like 1998. Yeah, and then so the CDs that I burned didn't work, so I'm like, well, maybe it's the CDs that I'm burning. I need to find an actual CD. I scrounged, man. There is not a single CD in this house. <laughs> you know, there, there's that. There, I have this interesting, like, stopping point where it comes to, like, say, music. Uh, because I, I am, I don't buy music too often, but when I do, it's it's usually iTunes or Amazon when it's a deal or something. Um, but I have so many CDs from when I collected them, and they're just kind of in my office. Everything's also on the computer, right beside the stack of CDs. But there's just that stopping point. You know, do I get rid of the CDs? Do I still technically own the music if I get rid of the CDs? It's like kind of a moral thing. Well, when I, um, I think it was when I moved to Pittsburgh was when, so it was like four years ago when I really liked, I looked at that big stack of CDs and I was like, there's no reason for me to have these. Throw them away. Yeah. But throw them away. Just, just throw them away. Don't even take them down to the exchange and get a couple bucks off of it. I do, well, I was in New Jersey at the time. I don't have an exchange. Well, you got something. You got what have you? New Jersey's got to have a pawn shop or two. Not oh, South Jersey. Not that kind of pawn shop. Oh, throw in the trash. Just in the <laughs> trash. That's your pawn shop. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so a couple apps here uh, before we move on. Uh, well, well, first, first though, this was last week, and I think this kind of more officially came out. But they got uh, Flipboard's coming to Android uh, finally. You guys can have that. I don't know if it's going to be as good because I know I know Chachi. You said a lot of your apps aren't really 
as great. No, I explained. So, yeah, tell me what you explained the other day. I explained to Sorg that uh, how I determine which platform I use apps on mm-hmm. is by how they act on my personal Android device. Mm-hmm. Uh, last week, I downloaded an Xbox mm-hmm. Live app for my Android. It was terrible. So I grabbed the iPhone, and I downloaded the same exact app, and it worked perfectly fine. Full disclaimer, of work iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I don't even know if I'm going to try Flipboard on the Android, because if I really want it, I'll just get it <laughs> you on can the iPhone. Tell, and actually, I think they're showing your phone here. Is that is that your phone? No. Or is it just another HTC? <laughs> okay. No, that looks like... No, that's the Galaxy S2. It says right in the... The freaking article. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I, I'm I'm kind of spoiled by Flipboard now because I, I I can't I have trouble going back to just seeing a column of tweets. Yeah, I know. I get emails from you every twenty minutes when you're <laughs> using Flipboard. Uh, yeah, yeah. Did you read a story and you're like, oh, Chachi will like that? It's my consuming e-ma- time. Email it. it. It really is my consuming time is when I'm on Flipboard, or you'll see a, just like a stack of tweets <laughs> from me. Of, hey, check this out because the button's right there, right? Um. But really, between that and what's happened with the new Google Plus that also was released uh, this. last Wednesday, um, have you guys uh, on the iPhones tried the new Google Plus yet? You know, I haven't been on Google Plus in a while. No. <laughs> what about you, Rob? Yeah, me either. No, uh, it, no, I don't touch it. Give it, give it, give the app a chance. You know how, uh, Rob? You explained to me you were on path because of how pretty it is. That's yeah, I still, I still, I, uh, I check into Foursquare through Path because of how nice the UI is. That's kind of how I feel about the Google Plus app now. Hmm. Really, really, it is. It, it, it's really got kind of that feel. Like, I mean, it, you know, obviously a little different, but it, it's got a different aesthetic to it. I, I kind of wish part of it would go over onto onto the Google Plus page. To be honest, uh, you know, not that I don't like what they've done with it in the past month, you know. On the very day I was about to teach Google Plus, that was great. Um, but uh, but no, I, I think they're making some good moves there. But the weird thing is, they did this before the Android app, so I don't think that's been updated yet. You know what I'm excited for? What's that? Turntable FM is finally on Android. Because <laughs> <laughs> the one place I do have all my music is my phone. There you go. There so you go. now I can DJ on the go. Does that does that brings in tracks on your phone? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was just like stuff that was online. No. I, I haven't used it too much on the phone. It was a little glitchy on the iPhone side when they had it. Your face is glitchy. Right. Okay. Show title. Your face is glitchy. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, somebody get that down. Um, and uh, there was one more story here that Rob, I think you brought up. Yeah, so now that I've closed the dock. So Google Glass <laughs> might not be all it's cracked up to be, from what yeah, I recall. It's, it's, uh, if you Why, show, Sorg? Oh, boy. If you, uh, that's, that's not the right document. <laughs> wow. Um, if you, there it is. If you listen to the show when we first talk about uh, Google glasses or the google glass project which um if you're unfamiliar is basically a sort of heads-up display that would be uh worn as a set of glasses that will let you do all the sort of things you do uh on your mobile device but do it in more of an augmented reality screen directly in front of your eye sort of thing you just talk to your phone and it does things so a lot like siri but it actually works and it it integrates with your environment and, and it's all wonderful and so today uh, Google was issued the official patent for Google Glass, and along with that issued patent, they uh, admitted that all of the cool things you see in the video, yeah, there's there's a reason we don't really talk about them in the patent, because they're not really possible yet. Um, just so you know, like that augmented reality stuff, yeah, that's, that's, that's really wishing is all that is. It's not actually a thing yet. This is almost as disappointing as the Star Trek Enterprise. Almost. Almost. If it's going to take another 20 years to get some glasses from Google. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I hate about this story? What's that? Is I go to load the patent page, not thinking about going to load the patent page, and it's the same exact page that I help these attorneys access all day long at work. And it comes full circle. Yes. Yes. I'm just like, oh, I should have done that. I feel dumb. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we we didn't we kind of expect this though. I mean, it was kind of a too good too good to be true thing. Uh, what was their pro- what was their projection on that? It was it was still like three years out, right? Yeah, I mean, Longer? it's still uh, pretty close, which is also why they're saying like, yeah, when the thing comes out, it's not going to be everything you saw in the video. Yeah. So, oh well, we kind of expected it. Uh, always something to look forward to, like the Starship Enterprise. Um, so, <laughs> you just call it the Starship Enterprise. 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 Yes, Enterprise. <laughs> Enterprise. Emerald is going to fund the Starship. Bam. Project. Bam. Hey, let's go to the third star to the left. Bam. Now we're in Peter Pan. What? No, that was the thing Kirk said, wasn't it? I don't know. Um, I wish you could replicate foie gras. What? (laughs) Wow. Wow. Okay, on that note, uh, (laughs) that's all we got here. And we scared everybody out of the Google Hangout. And nobody sticks around to the end. I swear people were here before the show. They don't hang out. That's because they show up early for the wrestling. They're, they show up early for the wrestling. <laughs> they show up way too early for the wrestling. Yeah. And there you go. Uh, well, anyways, guys, we're here live every Tuesday night. Here. Tuesday! Doing this thing at 7 p.m. Your face is here Tuesday nights. Awesomecast.com, live.sorgatronmedia.com. I know. Yes. That time it wasn't it wasn't a, a failed insult. Your face is here every Tuesday night. I am. Night. It is here. Right here. In your face. Yes. And Justin TV. Um, hey, contact us at contact at awesomecast.com. Twitter at con- awesomecast. Wow. Um, and, you can uh, even call Sorg's phone. No, you can't. No? Well, you can. It's not hard to find my number. Four. What? Four. One. One. No, I won't. No. Um, you don't want me to give out your phone number? <laughs> Maybe not on this one. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, we're on Google+. Plus. We're on, on the other stuff. Uh, we have a mailing list. Chachi's working on a little bit of the mailing list. We don't have a we mailing list. We have a mailing list. We don't. We have a mailing list? We do have a mailing list. I'm, re- I'm resurrecting. There's three people on this? There's what? actually 43. What? Yeah. We have a mailing list. 43 out of the 18,000. Is that what that is? For, for Sorgatron Media. There's a, there's a all-around mailing list. We used to oh, s- for we Sorgatron used, Media. We used to send show awesome updates, guys. but we're redoing that. Chachi's moving my camera. Um, I didn't touch your camera. Oh, I did touch your yeah, camera. Yeah, you did touch my camera. Chachi. Sorry. Chachi, leave my camera. Le- Sorry. Leave the camera. Sorry. Um, but no, we're, we're redoing it. It's going to have updates uh, from uh, Insert Coin to Begin and all the shows and all the stuff going on. And uh, a lot of the, uh, since we're doing a lot of social media educations, uh, a lot of that will be listed there as well to get all your updates. And I think I might throw some a tip or two in there. So go sign up to find everything. Oh, and DVD releases, because there's that too. Um, so go sign up for that. It's over at SorgatronMedia.com. I think there might be a link on AwesomeCast. There will be soon if there's not yet. Um, and, and there's that. I never signed up for it yet. I get it. Yeah, because I need somebody to test because nobody had signed up for it when I started <laughs> it. You were the guinea pig. You're always my guinea pig, Chachi. You're spamming me. I am spamming you. Then, dude, you just have to hit unsubscribe. That is so much work. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we count on, right? Um, anyways. <laughs> no, because uh, I'll hit the unsubscribe button. You'll take me to a different web page. You'll ask me why I unsubscribed. Then we make you punch the monkey. Yeah, and then you'll make me type in a code I can't read anyhow because there's a whole bunch of, like, static in front of it. and <sighs> You get really angry at your email, don't you? I do. Chachi. Yeah. Somebody's getting a call. Where's your stuff at? Insert coin to begin dot com. Where's your Twitter at? At Chachi says. What do you tweet about? Everything. Okay, that's good Most, enough for me. Mostly no pants. <laughs> John, thanks for joining us again here. Anytime. What do you got going on? You want to plug? Uh, you can plug my Twitter, Carmen Avenue. I tweet about anything that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. No falsities on this Twitter account. No replicated foie gras. No, whatever that <laughs> no. may be. Rob De La Creta. Hi. Rob JDLC.com for all of his connections. That's true. Hi, Rob. Even missed connections. Hi, Chachi. <laughs> Anything you, you, you want to plug out there? Um, Any top secret projects going on? I still have absolutely nothing I can talk about. Uh, if if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some blatant fundraising here. Do it! So... 
in uh, in June, I'm doing the MS150 again, which is a 150 mile bike ride over two days to support um, research and. Oh, running. you did it! Yes. Before, That'll finish. Uh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> research and finding a cure for multiple sclerosis. I think I know why Chachi's clapping. Yep. <laughs> and. Uh, and if you are interested in supporting this cause or finding out more about it, you can go to bikems.robjdlc.com or hit me on Twitter or Facebook or whatever, whatever, and I'll be happy to educate you. I can use all the money I can get because all the money goes to all the research and development and all that good stuff to uh, try and get rid of this nasty MS thing. There you go. Thanks. I went to the same site, didn't it? There it is. There it is. Here all right. Go. So Put some I, money in him. Put some money in Rob. In him. Fill me with your money. <laughs> Fill him with your money. I clapped because last year when Rob was talking about this, he would constantly say that he was taking a 150-mile bike ride in support of MS. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, after you said that, I permanently fixed my phrasing. <laughs> you did it like two years in a row, though, too, right? I mean, that was like a long-standing thing. So, well, this, is my, this would be my fourth year doing it. Mm-hmm, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yes, he didn't do that this year, therefore he earned applause. Yes. Yay. Well, that's it for the Austin cast this year. This year? (laughs) This year. (laughs) So we are. See you in 2013. Six months off, yes. I have to do an interview after this, too. Seven. Um, What? Seven months off. Seven months off. (laughs) Uh, we'll you see wish. You. We will see you in January. No, we won't. We'll see you next week. January. Tuesday, like we always are. Thanks to the awesome chat room. They've been <laughs> hopping all night. I've been loving the uh, Doc Brown jokes. we got to find some pinball parts, Chachi. Pinball parts. So we can get the plutonium for the Enterprise. I know. Yes. Mm. Yes. You guys know that we're not the ones building the Enterprise, right? We, we, well, we can certainly try, can't we? The plans are there. You can try, right. Anyone can steal the plans now. All, all it takes is a will and a way, John. It's a little bit more. And a little <laughs> a bit couple, of couple, crits. couple spare nuclear reactors. If you have any laying them around, I don't know. They're there's laying some, around. There's some ideas in the chat room. Maybe we'll explore those after the show here. Thanks to everybody. Awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Hey guys, it's awesome cat. What was that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I had a hiccup the moment you started. Jeez.